Hey, everybody. What's up? This is Andrew from American Musical Supply. And uh, I'm very uh, fortunate today to be joined by Jason Richardson, who is a great, phenomenal solo artist and also the guitarist for uh, all the band All That Remains. Um, so, Jason, how are you doing today? Pretty good, man. How about you? Yeah, pretty good. Thanks. Thanks for uh, taking some time out of your schedule to talk to us. Yes, um, definitely. Schedule. <laughs> <clears throat> right yeah, considering yeah <laughs> we still appreciate it so mm -hmm. hopefully uh hopefully you know that yes uh, uh but you know i wanted to talk to you today about um this you know this new instrument that's coming out with your name on it now your your seven string uh has been out for about a year is that correct yeah around there probably a little bit over now okay. i think i think a little bit over a year Okay, cool. And mm -hmm. so this is the uh, this is the six string model. Congratulations on the release of that. Yes. Now everyone can have one. Because so not everyone's a seven string player, even though seven strings have six strings, but some people don't like that. So right. this is this now every now everyone can get one and be stoked. <clears throat> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I remember, you know, I. Uh, talk, uh, spoke to you at, at NAM a couple of years ago, and you were you were taking us through the at the booth, and mm -hmm. you were taking us through the um, uh, the the Majesty models. And I just was curious, you know, uh, what what is it about Music Man guitars that's drawn you to to this to that to this brand and, and playing Ernie Ball Music Man instruments? Well, it kind of happened uh, not intentionally when uh, I was a teenager. I got my first one. And I just wanted to get uh, my favorite guitar player's guitar. And that was JP, or that was Petrucci. And this was back, like, I think um, I discovered Dream Theater when I was probably like 12 or 13, somewhere around there. I think drums were my main instrument at the time. And then I wanted to be able to write songs. So I figured I need to, look, to become better at an instrument that has notes since uh, you can't write a whole song with drums. So I started forcing myself to learn how to play guitar. That ended up working the best out of every instrument I tried. So I put all my effort into that one and uh, everything just took off a lot faster with that. I just got the hang of it a lot better than all the other ones. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to, my favorite guitar player's guitar and that happened to be a music man. So I saved up over a year for it and it ended up being like one of the sickest guitars out there. And then I just kept playing them and then they kept coming out with more of them. And then it just kept going from there. And then now here we are with this thing, like years, like a decade after the fact, if no, a lot longer than that, like decade and a half after the fact. And I actually just recently, there's a, a, a the store that I grew up, uh, like it was like an hour away. My dad would drive me there to play the JP. And um, so I could check it out before I bought it. It was the only dealer near us. It was like a little over an hour away. And I just messaged them on Instagram and made sure that they were able to get a couple of these in their store. So it's kind of like a full circle moment. Oh, that's cool. Really epic. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, that's really cool. Yeah. Wow. So, and uh, in terms of, well, first off, like how did it feel when they approached you about creating a signature model? Um. <laughs> it's actually... Um, <laughs> I mean, it was pretty, it was pretty surreal, but the way it got confirmed is kind of hilarious. Um, Cause we had been talking about it for a while. Like, and uh, every, it was like, I knew it was probably going to happen, but there was no um, like hard confirmation yet. And it was literally all of like, it was at NAM, And as you know, anyone that's been to NAM knows how chaotic it is. And it's just a nightmare every single time. Like it, it's fun, but it's chaos from start to finish. So I was at the booth. And then Sterling just comes up, Sterling Ball with one of the, with the main a &R, R Derek. And he just looks at me, shakes my hand. He's like, I want to make you a guitar. And then just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, that's, that's what, ha that's how it got confirmed. He just like, Derek came up with Sterling at NAMM. He was turning, looking at me, he's like, I want to make you a guitar. I think he was on the way or something or busy or just shakes my hand. And then just <laughs> leaves. <laughs> So how how did the uh, how did the process un, unfold from there and and how what or what prompted you know the the use of the Cutlass as the the base platform? So actually, um, so I was kind of getting more uh, stoked or trying to like 
learned like different more or different styles of stuff than I had usually tried or been doing. Just you know, kind of like broaden the palette a little bit more, like stuff mm -hmm. from like dudes like uh, like more like finger style kind of stuff, like uh, like John Mayer, Mateus Sato, like all of those kind of guys. So I tried, I started learning some of that, and I realized all I had was pretty much just like the JP type guitars, like dual humbucking um and stuff like that granted those do have coil tap but um it's much different than just an actual like strat or something um i actually the one that started it uh, which way do i need to turn is all the way back there that one that if you can kind of see it in the back that's an actual just a triple s cutlass mm -hmm. um it's a normal six string 22 frets um it's a it's a one-off uh actually i'll just grab it so when I told them I wanted one, they know I like Buckeye Burl and all of that a lot. So we got the, they, I think uh, one of the main dudes over there, Tomas, uh, and uh, they just kind of had fun making this, which is essentially, this is just a reg, besides it being Buckeye Burl top with a Buckeye pick guard and all of that, it's just a normal or standard cutlass triple S uh, with rosewood neck on the back and then mm. uh, binding. But I got this one and was playing it all the time. And then I got the idea of how could we like combine like the two pickup styles in there, essentially. Um, so mine can essentially kind of like, or best the way I always put it is it can switch back and forth between humbucking, like exclusively humbucking and exclusively single coil. <clears throat> okay. So, cause I, you know, I've been playing the JPs and I'm known for metal, so I need to be able to still have that sound, but I like the shimmeriness of the, uh, the cutlass for cleans. And I have a couple random tangents and songs that are different genres that fit better for the, that kind of sound, uh, like a weird jazz part, a weird country part and stuff like that. And the single coils just work a lot better for that kind of like characteristic. So, you know, and pretty much every, every guitar that has tap, you need to do a coil tap. You have to do like extra motion to activate it. Mm -hmm. um, and live, I would kind of, there's sometimes there would be moments where I didn't have enough time in the song to do that motion. So I would just like, just deal with it being like every coil or something for the clean sound, which is a little more dull in my opinion. It's not my preferred sound for that. Um, it's good to have options, but I literally would only use it because I didn't have time to get to the next, to get to the right sound that I wanted. So I would, I would just deal with it. So with this guitar, uh, instead of having that extra motion in there, when you put the switch right in the middle, it just immediately goes to tap. Uh, you don't have to do anything else just because that's the sound that I heavily prefer for any sort of clean, anything is just that right away. So that extra motion is gone now. And I personally don't really that, like the way. Is that the, these uh, two coils here? Like on, uh, or is it just? I'm pretty sure it's the outer two. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty sure it's the outer two. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, but then when the tone knob is up uh, with the push pull now it's only single coil so like when the switch is down then it's only the bottom one which is you know the more like kind of like that country twang kind of sound mm -hmm. that you would need for something like that and then all the way up is only the top coil so that gives you more of that like smooth like cut uh, like strat like top uh, or neck pickup kind of sound gotcha um, and then when it's down, then it's back to humbucking. So uh, every to uh, both top coils neck, both top coils down, and then back to tap again in the middle. And it's got the preamp boost too. <clears throat> still, wow. So a lot of still a lot of flexibility available. Mm -hmm. the switching scheme that you got going on there. Yeah, I had a way more like elaborate kind of idea with in my head when we uh, to switch back and forth. Like it involved like a second switch and all of this stuff, and then the main R and D over there was able to figure out a way more like streamlined version of it, uh, which was what ended up being on here. Gotcha. So we got like this, the same point across, but in a much more efficient, like easier to use kind of way, which is one of the reasons why music man is so sick. Cause like I right. took my idea and just made it like a million times easier to do. <clears throat> That's cool. Very yeah. cool. So uh, in, in terms of that, the, the ergonomics, is, it, the ergonomics seem a little bit, you know, obviously different from the standard cutlass model. Like looking at this one, I noticed obviously the position of the, the, the switch and the controls, like it's kind of like a little bit different from what you'd expect, even yeah. from a five-way blade switch or something. Mm -hmm. But then there's also, you know, a contour here uh, and yep. 
extra material taken off the back of this horn and yep. so what what were the what was like the the, the impetus for I guess that for the ergonomic thing. I could, I guess I could see here, maybe this is influenced by the, the mag, the majesty guitars, like w the location. Of uh, this which, which, where are you pointing to the switch? Oh, the, yeah. The switch. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah. So the way the, um, well, I mean, I've played the JPs mm -hmm. since I was like 14 and I just turned 29 in July. So that's a really long time and a lot of muscle memory, um, <laughs> at that point. And, but it just made with these switches though, it just makes so much sense um to have have it right here because like anytime i see a switch on a guitar that's in any other position other than right here i'm just confused by it because it's like why like on a les paul for example it's up here so if you need to change it you have or change the sound you have to pick your hand up off the, the strings which creates extra noise and then you have to do it up here it's just like it's nowhere near as efficient um in my opinion it just seems very like misplaced or like if they're down, the switch is like down here or something like behind the whammy bar and behind two knobs. Or it just, you, again, you pick your hand up, which creates excess noise, do that. And then, so it's just like, it's just not you know, nowhere near as efficient in my opinion. Um, this is right here. All you have to do is stick your hand out and it's angled at like a 45 degree angle, which is the motion that your mm -hmm. hand is moving. It's not like up and down or left or right, which is not a natural motion for your hand at, at this spot um so that's why we there are just decided to stick with with this one just because it makes it just makes so much sense it's perfect there's like no reason to change it at all mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh and this obviously you know i'm up i'm up here a lot so we need just like no resistance whatsoever in order to make everything happen uh up there taking taking this off actually was uh i don't think this was my idea i think it was the r d guy again um drew and we were just trying to figure out a way to maybe like make a little bit more room in a way that hasn't been done before and it takes some weight off of the body as well so it just makes a little bit even more like extra room for your knuckles and stuff when you're up here like if you do need to do some weird contorted thing that would have your hand be like that it's just like that little bit even just a little bit extra room mm -hmm. for that too <clears throat> very cool but that's pretty much it that's pretty much it for that right. aspect <clears throat> in, in terms of the neck like I, I was, uh, I was playing this a little earlier. It's very, it's very comfortable. Like, is that based on a, a different, uh, you know, Ernie Ball profile? Is that si similar to like the the JPs or what? What drew you to this neck profile and what's it? What, what's its origin? So the way that this whole guitar started was we just took the Cutlass and <laughs> they just made a seven and sent it to me. They didn't like no spec changes or anything like that. They just took the Cutlass turned it into a seven string and then gave it to me. And then we essentially chipped away at it from there. Like literally just like, uh, like making the cutaway bigger, shaving that back off. And one of my other critiques was to just make the neck thinner. Cause I mean, as you know, like strats, they generally have uh, like even, even the cutlass, like it's more like round baseball batty in a way. Yep. Uh, like it's like a much beefier kind of neck. So that was my main thing with that. It was like, all right, neck is definitely a little thick for uh, my preference. And so essentially they just kept that same neck shape as far as I know, and just made it thinner. So it should be pretty much the same as the cutlass, just like a way like compressed version gotcha. of that neck shape. Okay. <clears throat> and it just ended up feeling like insanely comfortable. I remember when I first got the six, like a few months ago, I was like, good. Like, <laughs> I was like, don't change anything. It's right. sick. Like they sent me the first six. It was essentially just taking whatever we have with the seven, transposed it over to a six, and then I got it. it was like, nice. It nailed it first try. Right, right, right on. <laughs> yeah. And is this is this the same pickups that are in that are in your seven as well? Yeah. Yep. They're music right. bands. They're uh, brand new for this model. I'm pretty sure, as far as I know, these pickups are only in my model. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to share about the them, them and the, in terms of the design, like what you were looking for out of the design of those pickups? Um, I didn't really give them like too much guidance, honestly. Um, it, it's uh, one of the the dude that made them. It unfortunately isn't with the company anymore. He he had been there for like three decades and just retired not that long ago. Wow. So like he put his work in for sure. He deserves it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think this was one of like the the last projects he did before he left uh actually was uh designing these pickups and 
I think they just knew what I liked, knew the sound that I liked, what I was going for. They made the Cutlass pickups, obviously. Those are also Music Man pickups. Right. So they were able to take, or he was able to take everything he knew that I liked and what I was going for between trying to combine them and then came up with these Music Man ones. Right. <clears throat> and that was another, like, first try kind of thing. Like, they just knew exactly what I was looking for from what I, what I told them, what we were trying to combine, and then he came up with these pickups. Mm. <clears throat> the... Uh... The tremolos, it feels, that's one thing I love about the Ernie Ball Music Man guitars is how good the yep. trem feels. <laughs> like they're, yep. so, they're very, really nice trim system. Yep. That's, awesome. yeah, they're Floyd killer for right. sure. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing <clears throat> to think that there isn't really, you know, there's no locking nut or anything on it. And uh, yeah, nope. cool. No, those mess with tone too much. They add like a little bit of like a harshness, like a fatiguing kind of like top end that I'm not a fan of personally. Right. Yeah, and just too many moving parts. It's just too many things that could go wrong <clears throat> yeah. with, the, with those bridges. This is like just way more to the point and done way more efficiently. Right. <laughs> yeah. And uh, how many springs do you usually run in yours? Three? Uh, it depends on the tuning, but yeah, it's typically three. Okay. Um, that also depends on how hard you want the bridge to be able to flutter. Like right. if you can get away with two for whatever tuning you're using, the – flutters are going to be a lot like bigger sounding and the tighter the bridge the less the less of a flutter you can get mm. um but again it just it just all depends on tuning and string thickness and stuff like that so but right now there's only uh three in here and i think that's pretty much what all of my guitars are or three gotcha do you do you down tune the six at all or you really keep it in standard tuning um for right now, I think they're all in a uh, standard. Mm -hmm. I haven't used them uh, for any of my own personal stuff yet, other than just jamming and just playing, uh, playing on it. But the band that I play for now, all that remains, um, all of that stuff is six string. Uh, I would use a seven anyway, just because that, that's all I had at the time. Um, but I would sometimes throw like some extra low stuff in there just because I, I could and they told me I could just pretty much just have fun with it and do whatever I wanted um so every now and then I would throw like a like just like a bass note in a chord or like if we were playing a riff together and I had the option to go an octave lower like on the second half of it or some of the part I would do that just to kind of like spice it up a little bit but um I'll be able to start using these for all the all the remain stuff and that stuff is all in um I think C sharp standard okay gotcha yeah <clears throat> that's quite a ways down <laughs> it's all right it's only a step and a half that's not too bad it's not like an eight string which the lowest string is an octave lower than than, that's, than that that's true <laughs> yeah <clears throat> that's cool just question about the frets uh you, mm -hmm. did you choose the stainless steel frets for this or was that awesome i think that's pretty that, much a standard okay for, for the majority of the music man stuff <clears throat> yeah gotcha yeah, yeah I love a lot of Go ahead. A, lot, a lot of what we, we kept some stuff that I'm just used to mm -hmm. for sure. And that's one of the things that I didn't even think about. So it's, I'm pretty positive. It's just whatever this, they use standard for the majority right. of the music man guitars. Don't fit. Don't change it. If, it, if it's not broke. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, and the finish is uh, super, it's really cool. You know, this, this color oh, yeah. and uh, the burl top and everything. Yeah. It turned out, insane this is not what i i mean i i had it like in my head a little bit when we all met up to like brainstorm ideas for the next model and we when we talked about it and got the idea on the table uh, that we were going to go with like i knew it was going to look sick but I, I didn't realize it was going to end up like this epic looking right like, even like on the back like you can still see like the grain the, the red grain and all of that yeah beautiful mm. looking guitar so um what's what's kind of new like what what are your uh obviously you know 2020 has been like a total <laughs> disaster <you> yeah <laughs> um <laughs> uh but you know once things calm down and we're able to get back to playing live and doing you know mm -hmm. things out on the road and things what uh what do you have in mind for that and are you working on anything right now to kind of take you to that point uh yeah i've been um or my solo stuff i've been actively working on that like whenever like as inspiration strikes you know writing's fickle it's definitely it sometimes it works and then other times it doesn't so i'm just trying to not 
overly force anything with that and it's taking longer than i want it to but it's it's getting there for, for sure now like uh, i definitely have a lot more material than i did earlier than the year um when it comes to that so i'm hoping to be back in the studio before the end of the year to start recording the next solo stuff with my drummer uh lou collin um and then all that remains did have a tour it got pushed back obviously uh rescheduled who knows if the rescheduled dates will hold up because it sucks with like the business end of all this stuff it's like if you have a tour and you don't try to reserve dates it's like then you're not going to get them if things are normal again and then someone else will and so it's just like putting putting it off because i have a couple friends that their tours did get rescheduled and they were already supposed to have happened again and obviously nothing's normal still so they just keep having to do that just push it back and push right. it back and cross their fingers so we're kind of in the same boat i think our dates are rescheduled sometime next year i don't know when we'll still see if it happens or not right um uh, wow. <clears throat> but as far as for my own personal stuff the solo stuff uh that should be back i should be back in the studio before the end of the year recording that and hopefully I have a song out before the end of the year at least one a single or something <clears throat> Right on. Yep. Um, so if people are interested in checking you out online, like in finding out more about your solo music and things, uh, where, where could they do that? Uh, it's on every platform. If you just search Jason Richardson guitar, you'll be able to find it. Because uh, if you just search Jason Richardson, I'll probably pop up, but you'll also get a basketball player. And because NBA is kind of big. I'm sure you've heard of them. <laughs> but so sometimes that does pop up first or he does pop up first. It's pretty obvious to tell which one's me. Um, but if you just put guitar at the end of it, it'll help filter your search results a little bit, a little bit better. <laughs> cool. Right on. But yeah, it's on everything though. If you just search Jason Richardson, it should, um, should come right up, but oh. guitar helps. Right. Just at the end. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. Well, thanks so, so much for, uh, you know, giving us a little bit of a tour and, and telling us a bit of the backstory of your, uh, your new signature six string guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, again just want to say congrats and it's in, this is in seven too don't forget and in seven right yeah that's the one that's up there i have seen i posted like a little subtle picture of this like i didn't say anything about it it was just like in there and somebody was like oh i was stoked but you left the string off and i rep i replied to him was like you really think there's not a seven man <laughs> like come on <laughs> kind of funny <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's, he was, yeah. he thought he was being a real fan, but he really, yeah, he thought he was being clever. And I was just right. like, really? Like, you, you think we're not doing a seven of this? Like, not only six string. I can't even, I can't even use it live yet. <laughs> yeah. Keyword. <laughs> well, thanks so much for, uh, for the time you've uh, given us today. And if any of you out there are watching and are interested in finding out more, about the Jason Richardson Cutlass six or seven string guitar or any other Ernie Ball a Music Man guitar or bass, you can head on over to AmericanMusical.com. Thanks so much, Jason. All right. Thanks, man.